episode 67 of series 5 of Master League Story Mode. Firstly, one big channel announcement. I actually only just realised this if I had a bit of foresight, if I'd actually known anything about this channel, then I probably would have tried to arrange a live stream for this. But this is the 500th episode of PES Story Mode, a momentous day for the channel. I'm not quite sure what I was thinking three years ago when I started this channel. Not in a what the fuck was I thinking sort of way, but in a what were my goals, what were my aims. I don't really think there particularly were any aims, which was good. I'm glad I didn't aim to be rich or aim to be famous. That, well, I mean, 10,000 subscribers. I can't argue with that. That's a big achievement. But, you know, it's been a hell of a lot of fun. It's been great fun to share it with all of you. Uh, quick one for anyone who's watched every single episode. I did the maths roughly you've watched about a month or you've listened to about a month of this voice and you've watched some Pez for an entire month. Yep, 500 episodes, each one about 20. It's a lot, a lot of Pez. So thank you for joining me. Thank you for seeing it through with me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And remember for every half an hour video, I've done two hours. So that's a lot of time out of the last three years. Uh, you've been here with me through um, house moves, new jobs, New baby number one, new baby number two on the way. And it's been a pleasure to have you with me. So anyway, with that out of the way, this could be a tricky episode. We're going up against local rival Huddersfield. Surely we can't keep this win streak going. Surely. I feel like this is definitely the one to end it. And, you know, the omens are bad at the moment. Unfortunately, Leeds United and Marcelo Bielsa, they couldn't overcome Frank Lampard's derby to make it through to the playoff final. So we won't be seeing them in the Premier League next season. Uh, if you managed to catch the second leg, it was quite an eventful game. Uh, Patrick Bamford let the side down. Jack Harrison was amazing. Luke Ayling, who we didn't really see much in the series, he was class. And uh, the Bielsa mindset was there to the very end, even after having a man sent off. They were tearing around the pitch. The high press was real. So I would say that doesn't bode particularly well for this game. Um, but before we do get into that, I think we need to start thinking about next season. And although all of these would be good, uh, we're looking for left and right backs, I think. So we're going to change it up. Central midfield's all looking pretty solid at the moment. Um, Kobos though, not getting any younger. Thiago Mendes, probably not the long-term option. I'd quite like Trent to pop up here. I think that's my real goal for a right back still developing in England. We'll keep looking for a centre forward, but I think right and left back, if we can improve them, we've made an instant impact. So with that out of the way, oh yeah, let's not forget we are in sixth at the moment. We are two points ahead of Manchester United after beating them in the last episode. That was momentous. How will we get on today? I just know this is going to be really tricky. A derby is hard at the best of times, but chuck in a sort of mid-level, mid to lower level team who have been absolutely more difficult to play against this year. There's no doubt about it, and I'm not the only person to say that. These teams are more difficult than playing against the big sides. So let's have a look. How's everyone doing? Bernardo's dramatic improvement continues. We don't have any uh, derby flashing players, which is a bit odd. Brunetta on a downward arrow. He has been excellent recently, but I'm going to revert to the uh, two centre forward model. Yeah, that should do the trick. Everyone else can stay as they are. Um, we probably do need a Joe Gomez replacement, really. Although he has been pretty good. 78 rated centre-back is not going to be the one that we need in Europe, if we're in Europe. Let's not count those chickens. Anyway, Huddersfield. Well, playing two defensive midfielders, that could make things difficult. Uh, Diakabi up top, decent striker. They're not. They're nothing special, really. But just the way that these derbies can go, it doesn't even really matter. So a West Yorkshire derby here, and Leeds United, well, their fortunes have certainly changed considerably since these two, uh, well, they would have met in the championship not too long ago. Now both of them still in the Premier League, but Leeds United now almost inconceivably fighting for a European spot, taking down the big guns. But Huddersfield, they'll take great joy in knocking us down a peg or two, reminding us where we came from. A local rival, know us very well could get something here we need to be wary I know I say that a lot it's becoming a bit of a catchphrase but we really do come on dangerous ball into Dio Carby here oh that's a good challenge and now Lucasen can bring it forward into Romero a oh, little tap into Cliver he's got the pace to get away finds the horse back into Cliver here just a spin inside oh still Cliver with the effort oh, wow. how did that roulette work I don't understand so great attack anyway to start the game off Cliver oh it's <laughs> Megs Mendes will get to that head of Durham strong running there ball in looking for the horse oh the flicked header we can be putting those balls into the box the horse will be snaffling them up like a sugar cube off a flat palm 
this time though I don't know how good a connection he got off that maybe a bit of a shoulder unlucky Pritchard that's a good ball into Sobi Mendes is there keeps him wide but the ball is into Pritchard it's laid back to Diakabe fuck that fucking goal we've seen it so many times Mendes looked like he'd done enough here to prevent Sobi getting into the box but he's away from him far too easily it's a classic back heel into striker finish we know it well we know how to defend against it we didn't and we're behind here Lucasen, well played. Romero over the top. Weghorst has got the wrong side of Congolo. Weghorst now to level it up. It's a great save. Really unlucky. Romero out to Mendes. All through to Lucasen. Don't know what he's doing here. Will he get away from Jorgensen? Difficult angle. Took it far too wide there. What the hell was he doing up there? I'm not sure. Bernardo wins that back. Oh, and Cliver. Great footwork. All over the top looking for the horse. Lovely take on the chest. That's very nice. <laughs> the Dutch connection. It's normally something you'd associate with a, some good weed or something. But no, good goals is all this Dutch connection provides. It was difficult to say. Dutch connect. Dutch. Yes. It's a lovely goal. Yes, it's premium. I mean, look at this footwork here from Cliver. <laughs> the ball sticking to him. And he had the run of Romero to look for, but he very wisely picked out the Weg horse. Lovely touch on the chest. And not a shabby finish either. Let's take another look at Oh, we didn't get to see Clivert dancing between the two Huddersfield players. The horse so dependable in situations like that. He's great at plucking a ball out of the air. And we're back in this one after a pretty difficult first half so far. Not many chances for either side, really. It's been tight. Derm now. Half nearly over. This is what happened last time. Back to... Oh, you're fucking kidding me. Oh, you fucking bastard. Well, oh, that goal is so hard to defend. <laughs> Luckily this time, finishing wasn't there, but that would have been very frustrating. And there we are, half time here in Huddersfield. Well, okay, it has been very tight. This has been one of the games we've had to work the hardest. Look at that, almost identical stats. Of course, his goal was a good one. We need another. I'd take the draw. No, no, I wouldn't take the draw. Got to keep the wins going. Is it four? Would it be 14 wins? Might be 14 wins. Wow. 13 wins, maybe. Is this the 13th win? That's That seems unlucky. Anyway, I've forgotten. We've won so many. Let's win another. Bernardo says, I think you'll find that's mine. And I will launch a break here. And it's a great ball over the top. Into Adamola Lutman. It's away from Jorgensen. Steps inside, looking for the horse. Oh, should have gone for Maxi Romero. We looked for the miss pass there. It didn't work. Danger here. Kachunga into the box. Huddersfield finding a little bit of form here. Oh, Lukasen can't deal with it. It'll fall to Sobi. Dear Carby. It's wide. God, that was close. Come on. Let's not get sloppy. Dear Carby. Oh, he's onside. Butland will come out. Oh, smothered well by... Jack Butland, who's been absolutely key to us this season. What sort of pass was that, though? No, I can see it happening here. Pritchard, Butland. Never in doubt. Okay, so the ball out was, was poor. I don't know what happened there. Just that, I mean, it was well read. Anyway, it had us filled with another chance. Bernardo, big header. Don't know what the horse is doing back there, but now Lutman inside to Maxi Romero. Could win it here. <laughs> good, good save there. Really good save. Kobos into Lukasen. Finds Juan Brunetta. Oh, lovely interplay there with Correa. Brunetta! Oh! <laughs> Inspired substitution there from Marcelo Bielsa. Brings on Brunetta and Correa into the midfield. Diong just wasn't doing it. Romero wasn't working that far back against these two defensive midfielders. So he's brought on two players that... I mean, yeah, Correa's got his faults. He's a great player of intricate football. And Juan Brunetta, as we know, on the ball. A magician. And look at this lovely turn here. That's just such a nice way of finding a bit of space. Just pirouetting there. Defenders didn't quite know what to do with him as he stepped back onto that left foot. Finished well. That's absolutely gorgeous. Correa involved. It's a simple ball from him. He's on the pitch to do that. To link up with old Juan Believable. And has he come on and scored the winner here? Kachunga now. Oh, no, no, no. Whoa, he's put it wide. They've had chances, Huddersfield. They've absolutely had chances. 
I think they'll feel annoyed if they don't come away with at least a point from this one. Clive foul there. Surely, ref. Oh, we'll win it back. That's Karma. And now Juan Brunetta. Pick it up and look to drive forward. The ball into Romero is on. He's away from Congolo to seal it here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Unlucky 13. It could have been. It really felt like it would be, actually, at some points in this one. Huddersfield would have been excellent at both ends of the pitch. Defensively, Congolo's had an incredible game. Come the end, he just couldn't quite handle Maxi Romero. He got his body in front of him. Such a little powerful man. Congolo couldn't get the right side of him. And then, well, the finish from that position. That is uh, Maxi Romero's bread and butter. It's the Juan Maxi Axis. The Maxis. Beautiful. And that is full time here in this West Yorkshire derby. And we left it very late. What are they? Oh, it's a derby. That's right. That's why they're so excited. But uh, yeah, we left it late. We left it late to get the winner. 81st minute, Brunetta. Obviously, Maxi then sealed it with only a minute to go. But this was by far an easy game. We've, this it feels like one of the most difficult games we've had in a long time. I just feel created chances. They frustrated us throughout. But we got there in the end. And Brunetta, inspired substitution, comes on for a man of the match performance. Not too shabby. Not too shabby at all. And Bernardo with a 6.5. I mean, that shows just how much better he is than Gomez. That is about right. 4.5 to 6.5. That is how different they feel. So, Liverpool winning. They're ahead of us. And Manchester United winning as well. Okay. Was that Arsenal? Oh, Arsenal lost to Man City. Man City just steaming away. And Liverpool actually climbing ahead of Arsenal now after they lose. So, look at that. I mean, pfft, Champions League. I mean, if we keep winning, it could easily happen. United with a win, stay only two points behind us. Ninth spot now, a distant memory. Definitely not going to be a problem for us now. We're almost 20 points ahead of that. The big question for Bielsa, now he knows he's going to have a job next season, is if the board don't back us, do we stay? I'd love to know your opinion in the comments. If we don't get any... I mean, last season, let's bear in mind, we managed to create this team with nothing, not a single penny, but we've managed to create something. Oh, Rashford broke down, that would have been nice anyway. If we don't get any money this, for the next season, do we just go? Do we leave? Let me know what you think. So we've got a striker to look at, Chalov. Mm, mm, yeah, no, no. 14 wins in a row. Ooh, look at that. Everyone's well up for it today. Blue arrows everywhere. Bernardo continuing to improve. 85 rated now. He is our highest rated player, overtaking Justin Kluivert. Uh, De Jong didn't have a great game in the last one, but I'm not too bothered about that. Every single game up to that point has been. I mean, the horse... You can rely on him for goals. I still think this is the best first 11, but it's hard to leave him out, I have to say. Anyway, we'll keep it as it is. Um, Southampton, yeah, it's not a bad side. They've signed Vestergaard at the back, 81 rated. He's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, we're going to get beaten eventually, aren't we? Well, we're not going to win eventually. We've got some pretty easy games in the run-in. Winnable, you would say, winnable games. Oh, this is, the pressure actually is, is much higher now than I thought it would be, even though our job is safe. Right, let's do this. So as an Arsenal fan, I've never actually had the pleasure of enjoying or not enjoying a uh, playoff slash promotion race or playoffs race, whatever you call it, in, from the Championship into the Premier League. And I just can't imagine how soul-destroying it must be. Obviously, Leeds didn't win in the final. But to lose in the playoff final a whole season and then more to get to that point and then still lose, still not get promoted, must be heartbreaking. Anyway, we've not got quite such problems in this Leeds United reality. Let's get another win. De Jong into Mendes. A lot of talk about him maybe leaving the side. Or a replacement being sought after. Now De Jong brings it forward. Oh, clever ball into Juan Brunetta. <laughs> yes. You're Juan believable. Oh, oh, Juan, come on. Come on. I mean, that's got a little bit of a feel like, you know, when they have the tattoo of their children on their arm and they kiss the, kiss the names. Had that sort of tender feel to it. I don't know if he's maybe in a relationship with a corner flag. Or maybe his mum was a corner flag. Anyway. Great work here by De Jong. When he's on his game, he just floats across the pitch. Sly little ball here into Brunetta. Always puts it in the perfect spot. And then Brunetta in off the post. We start strongly here. And the Ellen Road fans, I mean, they must be in absolute dreamland at the moment. The way their team are playing. Oh, lovely ball to slip in Silver. Gomez comes across, deals with it well. Oh, Bernardo doesn't deal with it. Ings! Butland. Oh, away from his man. 
Still Brunetta. Oh, that's gorgeous. Oh, ho, 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 ho. When he's on his game, he's just full of creativity. That's what I love about him. Didn't panic there, edge of the box. Could have maybe got a shot away here. Went for the dummy. It's the double dummy. Onto the right foot. It's forced an excellent save. Brunetta over this one. Looking for the far post for Romero. He'll jump for it. Falls to Bernardo. Lutman. Oof, good hit. Romero, difficult angle. Still Romero. Another really difficult angle. <laughs> Oof. It's got our uh, shots numbers up at least. If we'd been a little bit more composed there, one of those might have been a good chance. Clivert now. Got him pinned back. Into Kobos. Clivert's continued his run. Cuts across. Lutman on the turn. Yes, easy. 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 And Lutman's actually scored a fair few this season. The, the end of season stats this year going to be particularly interesting because Lookman and Cliver I think have contributed a hell of a lot this season. It was the two of them, the two wingers linking up there. They bought goals with them this year and that makes us very dangerous. And there we are half time here at Ellen Road. It's been very very simple. We should have scored more really. The stats I believe are going to be yes absolutely mental. 64% possession. I mean they've had a shot which is pretty impressive with 36% possession. Um, another goal would make me feel a lot more comfortable and uh, yeah, then we can all just relax and really enjoy ourselves. I mean, we are really enjoying ourselves. This is just, I mean, this team is a joy to play with. Oh, awful. Cliver, Brunetta, Maxi Romero. <laughs> Bloody hell, he's hitting him hard today. <laughs> McCarthy with a really good save, but we should have punished them there. What a horrible throw that was. Could we have done better here? Maybe just slipped it into Maxi Romero first time. Oof, that is a good hit, though, and a great save. Oh, Lucasen, you absolute beast. Finds De Jong away from Vestergaard. Oh, Frankie De Jong. But Lucasen there. There was no luck involved at all. Just thank you. That's mine. Out the way. Could have just blasted it there. Probably would have been a more exciting option. He found De Jong. That's another good save. Should have been three or four here easily. Well, there we have it. Very simple. Pretty dull as well. I wouldn't have said there were too many high... Actually, no, we did have quite a few good chances. But Southampton, that is the worst team we've played this year. 38% possession for the whole game, even in the second half when we'd taken our foot off the pedal. Two shots, though. Got to give them that. I guess we can give them that. Juan Brunetta, that is dazzling best today. Everyone played well up top. No complaints. No complaints at all. We didn't make a single sub in that game. It was that comfortable. Let's take a look. Arsenal winning. United losing to Liverpool. They're going to drop even further behind. And look at that. Manchester City continue their dominance. And it will stay as is. That Europa League spot looking a real possibility anyway. United now five points behind us. We just need Liverpool and Arsenal to slip up. We just need to continue this incredible run. 14 games, I think. Wow. Wow. What's the... Yeah, wow. What's the overall most consecutive wins in a row record it must be way more than that doing pretty well city have only lost three games this season 88 points already They're, they could well be making 100 this season and they've scored 77 we've only scored 71 that's poor we have con we have conceded 45 and at the bottom of the table oh, it looks like leicester city are in real trouble west brom and stoke look like they're going down brian and southampton though doing very well southampton looked so bad there somehow they're in eighth and there we are three matches three wins what an April it's been. No showers on us. Juan Brunetta, look at that. 7.2. Two assists, two goals. Incredible. Not a huge amount to report from only three games, other than De Jong, dominant, really involved. We knew that would happen eventually. And look at that. Lookman's finishing's been very good. 67%. Only three attempts, but can't knock it. He's putting him away when asked. And uh, a big presence, obviously, in the side today. No Romero, which is uh, a change. But De Jong, Brunetta, Lutman, all in there. All exciting young players as well. That's what's so good. And Bernardo's been epic. He's really showed what it's like to have a full, amazing quality centre-back. Snuffs out so many things that you just wouldn't, wouldn't ever be able to deal with normally. So, we're into May. The final fixture is to come. What does the manager want from us now? Oh, well, the fat controller. Some kind words. He's not exactly liberal with these. I have to say, you're starting to turn things around. It's still early day. Still early fucking days. We're on our way to Europe. Anyway, keep cool. Keep calm. Don't, don't let him 
Don't let him get to us. He's willing to give us a little bit more time. That's very kind of you. Little boost to the salary budget there. That's nice. Let's see Romero only two goals away from Harry Kane in the race for the Golden Boot. And yeah, next episode then. If we can beat Brighton and Palace and go into the last game of the season, potentially Champions League in our hands. If Arsenal or Liverpool slip up at all in the next two games, very special. Who are they playing? That's the question. Arsenal, Spurs. Ooh. Arsenal, Spurs. Liverpool, Chelsea. Wow. That could really help us out. In this one, Liverpool have got Huddersfield though after that. That should be a win for them. Arsenal take on Wolves. They can be tricky. Final game of the season, Arsenal, Newcastle, Liverpool, Southampton. So the, the next one's going to be really interesting. If we can beat Brighton, there's a good chance one of the two teams above us could slip up and we could sneak in. Maybe into even a Champions League spot. <laughs> well, join me for that in the next episode. We don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but... 14 games, one in a row, only three left. Can we keep this win streak going just a little bit longer and end up with a season far beyond even our wildest dreams? I hope so. I'll see you in a bit.